Welcome back. This is Siv from AnesthesiaOneOneOnline.com. Um, this video, this episode video is uh, 11. It would be about thromboplast elastograph. Um, we, the reason I'm doing this video is because we talked about this on my uh, podcast. We did a high tech and I actually sent off a tag. So I'm not too familiar with tags. So I figured I'd do a video on it for what little I know. And also, um, they use this in cardiac surgery and trauma, so I don't use it as much. Uh, so I figure I do a video on it, so I share with you guys what I found, and I'll put in the link of what where I, where I found these uh, information from. So here we go. I'm going to share my screen. Do, do, do. Share the screen right there. Look at this one. And share. All right. So. I'll read from notes and I'll tell you, like I said, I'll, I'll tell you exactly where I got these uh, notes from. So, so this is from uh, Dr. Arish, uh, looks like he's got Arish MD. Um, he's a Harvard uh, anesthesiologist, cardiac anesthesiologist. Um, so I copied his stuff here. So let's go over the basic premise of um, a tag, a thromboelastic graphy. So just looking at the notes and I'll share you the notes later. So why would you want to do this? This is more of a great predictor of platelet and coagulation cascade. So it's it's a better indicated than you you would send off an ionized, I mean, a international ratio number, uh, which is the INR and the activated prothrombin time. I mean, it, it's a great test tool that we send off to the lab, but the uh, tag is actually more um, a better indicator of a uh, clotting cascade and platelet function. So basically, it looks at as we as you guys can recall back into um, our physiology about the clotting cascade, and I'll just refer just to the intrinsic pathway for this premise. So we're talking about aggregation, clot strengthening, uh, fibrin cross linking, and fibrin lysis. So just to uh, review, I got my handy dandy valley notes here. So again, the intrinsic pathway pathway you have a, a intrinsic injury to your um, endothelial cells so basically what attaches to those injuries is the Van Willebrand's uh, factor so it attaches there and when that attaches the G GP1B uh, receptors attach and that's how the platelets attach. And from there uh, you guys can recall and they start to form linkages so the linkages uh, we're referring to is the, uh, the fibrins that it's like little squiggly things that attaches to another platelet. And then a platelet comes in, activate plate comes in and attaches to that. Uh, if you guys have a copy of the master's um, memory master, I want to say, on the, uh, the core memory master for Valley, they do a great cartoon drawing of what the uh, von, von Wollenbrand's factor platelet activated platelets that you know come to endothelial injury. So they do a great job and it's, you know, it's very simple. It's not complicated. I'm pretty sure you can find some in YouTube land or, you know, Google land and get a good sense of what it is. But like I said, these little squiggly lines that attaches and activated uh, platelets and then that uh, attaches to multiple platelets and then attaches the other engine site of the vomitable brands. Now, when those are put together, you still need a cross linkage. That's where um, I want to say the, uh, the fibrins come in and that's where it crosses, makes that cross linkage, making the, uh, the injury more strength, stronger and it'll bind better. So those three things that are key players in int intrinsic pathway, um, we want to talk about factor one, which is fibrinogen, factor eight, which is von Willebrand's uh, factor. That's the initial um, attachment anchor that attaches to the in injured site so you need that first and then and then we need fibrin to make that cross linkage we talked about earlier so for that being said so all those three factors i mentioned are coming from cryoprecipitate that's why you want to give cryoprecipitate that's those cryoprecipitate contains all those three factors we just spoke about so that's a little you know synopsis little a review of uh, the intrinsic pathway. Uh, like I said, when I, that's this video is not for that purpose. You can go back to your physiology notes and literature notes and review those uh, more in depth as far as the physiology. That's the premise behind that. So why use TEG? So in trauma, in, in a situation when I was doing this case with high pack, we're decreasing the 
the amount. I don't. I was trying to figure out the cost of um, a tag. What would it cost? Um, you know, for these to be charged to the patient. Couldn't find anything online. So if you guys out there, YouTube land, can let me know how much the, uh, a tag would go for. Uh, you know, the end cost to a patient what would it be. But the reason they use a tag, no matter the cost, you're still reducing the amount of transfusion you're given for the case. So that's the reason why you want to do this rather than giving transfusion after transfusion. Also, it's. It says in the literature, it's an early detection, but it took me about an hour to get the samples back. So it's not that quick. So it's, it's, it's akin to your PT, INR and all, but this is more than an, uh, an active live thing where you can figure out you know, if you need to give blood or not, or what type of blood uh, you're giving. Is it whole blood, pack cells, platelets, cryo, FFP, so all those. So let's look back at this. So in the early phase, you have initiation, you have implication, and you have uh, propagation. So I'm gonna go through every single one of these. <clears throat> and here, I found this also on Google. Uh, here's your coagulation part, your fibrinolysis part. So the way this machine works is, um, it's it's better in a sense that it's, than the INR um, and PTI, but also it has uh, technician uh, abnormalities. But that, what I'm talking about is like, when they actually put the blood into the system, it spins it somehow it transduces it and and reads out an electrical uh, graph like this is what we see the classic um, normal clotting cast co coagulation here this is from the actual machine that does that like i said you can find this stuff online but that's how it gets these uh graphic uh designs how that looks like okay so let's go through it together uh let's the first thing we'll look at is coagulation so coagulation is this part right here and um, when we have, when we're looking at coagulation, when this is increased, so when this is getting longer, I want to say longer, you want to give FP. That's why Dr. Arish here has uh, indicated that you have to give FP in green here. And you can see that. <laughs> so for R, the R value is the reaction time. So the time latency from start of a test to initial fibrin formation and amplitude is usually about two millimeters. It's called the initiation phase depending on the climbing factors. Like I said, I'll, I'll list the link where I got this um, stuff from. So I don't, I don't have to like take notes or anything like that. You can just go for yourself after this video and check those links out. Pretty good knowledge base uh, people here. And then your K, your K is the kinetics. So basically time taken to achieve a certain amount of class strength. Uh, usually the amplitude is like 20 millimeters. Um, it's the amplification phase. And it's dependent on a fibrinogen. Again, what we're talking about fibrinogen is um, we're, we're talking about the factor one, was, as you can recall from the, your physiology. So that's your K. So your alpha, your alpha is the angle slope of a line between R and K, obviously, obviously stated here. It measures the speed at which fibrin builds and cross links and takes place. Hence, it's just the rate of coag uh, clot formation. Uh, it's also called the propagation phase and it's dependent on fibrinogen. So as, as I stated, cryoprecipitate contains the three factors we spoke about, factor one, factor eight, von Willebrandt's, and then the factor uh, 13, which is fibrin. So the cross-linking. So if you see uh, a decrease in this part, you need cryoprecipitate. That's why you wrote cryoprecipitate there. And then MA is the maximum amp amplitude. So what this is, is, is the, um, I want to say the way the word here is, represents the ultimate strength of the fibrin clot. So it's the strength of the clot. So overall stability of the clot, depending on uh, platelets. So we talk about the intrinsic pathway, platelets being one of the main um, key players in the colloidal cascade. So if this amplitude is um, decreased, you want to get platelets. Some of the literature says DDAVP, uh, you know, whatever your facility calls for, whatever your um, literature may um, indicate we, we want to go with plate, platelets in this factor. And then A3, LY3, no, some people go by A30, but it's the amplitude at 30 minutes. So this 30 minutes um, after clotting. So in this section, it's the percentage of decrease in amplitude at 30 minutes post MA. So so post the strength of the, the clotting, what, what does that look like um, at, at, 30, at 30 minutes? That's the 
that's the fibrinolysis phase. And then um, at the, the tail end, it's called a um, clot lysis time. So, you know, all those split products we talked about as far as clotting cascade, the, the lysis time that it takes, um, approximate value, uh, which uh, they use in, and I'll show you, I have an actual um, picture you can see here of a real tag from a patient that did on a high pec. So they usually use chelin um, activated for tags and the value differs if the native blood is used or between types of assays. So that's that. So this is what normal looks like. So this was ab. So here's your normal. So if your tag looks like this, so we talked about the R be, being prolonged. So usually you have an anticoagulant problem or hemophiliac problem or factor deficiency. And then you have a, um, remember I talked about uh, class strength. So the MA is decreasing this here. So you would, um, so you would give what? What would you give? We talked about it. Platelets, you got it. So the MA is actually prolonged and decreased in this section. Same goes here with the platelet. Uh, um, the, the MA, as you can see, is uh, decreased. So thrombocytopenia or thrombos cytopathy, some kind of uh, abnormality. And then um, the fibrin lysis. Uh, so this is like this indicating a presence of TPA. Um, continues, so the MA still continues to decrease. Uh, Fibrolysis is uh, pretty narrow there, I want to say. And this is somebody's hypochorality. So that means uh, the, the tender clot um, more than you. So there's some kind of uh, pathology going on there. And then disseminated uh, intravascular coagulation. So it's a hypochorality state. So secondary to fibrolysis. As you can see, the MAs, uh, the platelets increase, but also, but fibrolysis is down. And then very narrow, it's the hypochorality state. Um, this is a classic uh, picture that they use in every slideshow that I found. Um, so the the normal should look like the, a brandy a tumbler. So and the people that drink out there, I don't drink, drink brandy. I'm just a IPA kind of guy. Let me take a little sip of my tea here, guys. Uh, and then you, you do nothing, basically. Uh, and then red wine, uh, you give FFP. So it's that classic. You want to kind of lay this horizontally. This will be R, your R um, value. And this will be your, your alpha. And this will be your MA, if you can see it from that way. And then your test tube but is the classic uh, give play that switch more something like this. Hypocrag, I said that wrong. If you I correct myself. Uh, champagne, you want to give a uh, cryo. And again, with those carb precipitate, we're talking about factor one, factor eight, and factor 13. And then this is an upside down uh, martini glass. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so for this, you want to give TXA. Because it looks like um, the, the, the clots getting lysed long and usually look at your R. Your R is uh, pretty prolonged there. So here. Yeah. So for R, we need FFP. All right. And here's the my notes. You guys want to take a screenshot? I'm okay with that. I didn't write this. This came from the website, which I'm actually going to show right now. So that Dr. Rich, uh, he was from Harvard, and that's the the picture I got his uh, uh, colorful picture that he has there. And again, this is the um, the website I went to as far as getting thromboelastic graph. So it's great. So here's the actual patient I did uh, on the high pack. Obviously, I blurred it out as much as I can um, just to uh, uh, secure any uh, any indication of what this patient looks like. So you know, like I said, I'm not an expert, but I figured I'd do a video on this. But it looks like it's more like a, we talked about uh, the tumbler, the brandy tumbler. So it looks like that, in my opinion. Like I said, I'm not an expert. But uh, let's see her R waves um, are pretty short there, and then an alpha, alpha angles right there. And let me see, it actually gives you the normal value, so that's great. See the R, R there, so 
And we talked about, let me see what in the show here. The normal R is, let me see. Sorry, I'm scrolling through so fast. There it is. Okay. So it does show you. So 48 yeah, minutes, one to four. So this is our normal lab value. So your facility might be different. You know, it actually says low, high, low, high. So this actual, um, I took a picture of the uh, actual tech that I got back from this about this patient now. So I would say leave this alone. Like I said, I'm not expert, but that's my opinion. All right, that's it. it that's my video. This is on tag. Um, let me stop sharing for a second. So if you haven't already uh, subscribed to my channel. Um, you know, I'll bring stuff. I'm not a total expert, but I figure I make this video and share with you what I've experienced. So I made this video just for that purpose. If you like this video, subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Like, tell me you like. Well, you don't like, leave me a message, uh, comment on it. Um, share with somebody. You know. Uh, the best uh, way to teach is to share. So that's what I've been doing is to share. I'm not the best at everything, so I figured I'd share with you. And also, I'll put the link in this um, in below to my uh, podcast. Um, there's some other new material on there, but I don't want I didn't want to cross link it to the YouTube channel, so I kind of kept a separate one of the podcast. Uh, is more, more me talking rather than showing. This is more I needed to show this. Obviously, that's why I did YouTube on this. And then check out my website, uh, at www.csavat, um, check out my blog, what I've been up to, you know, you could follow me there. Um, and what else, and uh, if you haven't already, uh, make sure you uh, schedule a uh, study strategy with me. Um, like I said, if you had heard my story, I didn't pass my boards, my nursing boards the first time, had to we figured that out and I didn't pass my anesthesia boards the first time. So I know what it feels like to not be able to pass. You just got to tweak certain things and you can ask me that, you know, what didn't work. So you don't want to fall on your face the first time. You can ask me what worked and what didn't work. So, and it's, it's free. Like I said, it's, it's acuity scheduling. So I'll, I'll put that link in there too. It's just a free scheduling. You know, you just pick out the time that's convenient for you. We'll, we'll just go through it together and, you know, there's no attachment, no no assignments, nothing like that. It's just a free thing I'm providing. So make sure you schedule that. All right, that'll be it for this video. Let me show sure I stop this.